Hey there, Jay here from App Music Tutorials with yet another Zen Beats video. Welcome to lesson 15, part two of this automation series. During this lesson, we'll take a look at pattern automation, track automation, and a couple of nifty features, print track automation to pattern and print pattern automation to track. I would also like to humbly thank all of you for your support in helping App Music Tutorials break the 200 subscriber barrier. Yay! Again, I appreciate all of your support. So let's get started with our lesson. So to start this process, I have created a new song from scratch and I'm gonna set up the screen so we can see things a bit better as I'm working. And let me pop my options out and my channel strip out. And so here, uh, let's first get a drum track to get a beat going. And so let's double click on the sequencer icon and let's search for a pattern uh, named Big Beat 8. And I found it here. And again, I just clicked on the magnifying glass, did the search and it pops up. Let's give that a listen. All right, that sounds pretty good. I'm gonna close this, get back to our tracks here, and I'm gonna insert an audio track. And I'm going to open up my sample library by either double clicking somewhere on the track or I can long press or right click and choose Loop Browser. I'm gonna search for Garage Guitars. And I can see I have a number of these. The one that I'm looking for is Garage Guitars B3. Now you might be wondering if you have these samples available to you. Well, all the samples I'm using in our session today, I got from Zenbeats, either from the built-in libraries or the additional libraries that come with the fully paid licensed version. So. If you have, if you've got the full unlocked version, then you're going to have the same uh, audio files, the same samples and so forth that I have. So uh, you should have no problem with that. All right, let's insert another track. This will be an audio track as well. And I'm going to browse for um, an item called Circuit Breaker. And I'm looking for Circuit Breaker 140. I want to make sure I pop that over to the far left. And so now we have our elements out here. Let's take a listen to the guitar track real quick. And let's take a quick listen to our Circuit Breaker. And now let's listen to them all together. And I'm going to adjust some of the volume levels so they actually mix in better. So here we go. All right, so I've adjusted my levels a bit. And we're only gonna work within the confines of a four bar pattern. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to um, split this guitar audio track here. So I just put my cursor here so it draws the line. I make sure that this audio track is selected. I can long press or right click and choose split. I'm just gonna highlight the latter part and delete that. Now, if I want it back, I can actually drag this out and it'll reproduce 
but I just want to have a nice clean cut off here and that's one of the ways to do that. All right, so let's talk about how we can start to work with automation in audio files. So first of all, we're going to learn about pattern automation and how to automate the pattern. Now it's very similar to the way we learned in part one when we learned how to automate a sequencer uh, pattern. So it shouldn't look really any different, but audio does offer you different options than the MIDI format does. So you might notice some differences as we continue. Let's open up the audio file. And because I've basically trimmed off a part of the file, it's only displaying the active portion of the loop. And even though I have this loop fully extended out to four bars here, uh, the loop gauge, it's only going to play this many. It's only going to play out to here. So if I select play, let me first uh, solo this track. So if that bugs you a little bit and you don't like to see this extra little shadowed area, what you can do is just pull in your loop range indicator, the end point, and then now it's kind of blacked out and now it makes more sense that this actually follows along with the four measure pattern. In order to automate this information, I'm going to make this a bit bigger here. And notice that at the upper right, I've got my automation icon. So this is where I get my automation for the pattern level automations. And I want to automate a flanger effect, but before I can automate an effect, I have to first apply it. So that's why I don't see any flanger option here. This is just the naturally occurring automations that we talked about in the previous episode. So, but all I need to do then is I have to add the audio effect. Now, if you don't have the channel strip up here, if it looks like this currently, just go down to the bottom and choose the channel strip icon and it'll switch that around for you. And now choose audio effect. So I'm going to bring out the flanger. And I'm going to switch the default to the next option, flanger tube. Now, there are a lot of parameters here, um, and all of them are automatable. Within this section where we're dealing with our waveform, um, the things that control the waveform itself and how much effect is applied are the speed and the depth. So the depth is something that's on the vertical axis. You can see as I go up and down, that knob is turning up and down. The rate is um, on that horizontal axis. So I'll just leave that set to 1 16th. So I am going to actually control through automation the depth parameter. So let me close this up for now. And now that we've got the... In fact, added now, if we go up to the automation option, it's going to be there. And here are all the automatable parameters. We're going to choose depth. All right, so let me go ahead and start to paint something in here. And let's see what that sounds like. Kind of cool, right? And so we've just automated the flanger. And of course, you can modify this to your heart's content and you can tweak different parameters. Let's lock this in step. Let's go ahead and close out this overlay. 
And then I'm going to pull out the flanger just so we can see what's going on. We can actually see the automation at work. So it's interesting uh, how this works. Now this is just the pattern level automation. And this is going to be super useful, especially if you want to be able to have effects applied throughout the entirety of your loop that you're using. It works great. Uh, so let me go ahead and close the effect. Let me close out of this sample. And now we can see in the mixer area what the automation curve looks like. And again, it's really sloppily drawn, but... For this episode, it will do just fine. Let's hear them all together. Just wanted to play that one more time because now we're going to actually automate the next track. And we're actually going to use track level automation in this example. So we're not going to go into this audio file. We're going to... Uh, apply the automation at the track level by clicking on this icon here. I'm going to add a new automation and I'm going to add just a low cut filter here. And notice that when I do that, it gives me that kind of dimmed overlay with my tools over here to the right. So the paintbrush is actually selected. Let me go ahead and draw something in here. Now, let me solo this track and let's hear what we've got. Let's see what it sounds like all together. And you may notice, but here is the filter meter up here. In case you didn't notice it, that's how you can tell the automation is working here. Because the filter parameter is moving along in step with the automation. So let's close out the overlay here. So we've taken a look at the pattern level automation. We've taken a look at track level automation. And a big difference between the two automations is that the pattern level automation moves along with the pattern. It's locked in step. It's actually embedded. Whereas a track level automation is at the track level and affects everything and therefore the automation curves don't move as you move your audio clips around. But let's suppose I changed my mind and I thought, you know what, I really should have maybe started that off as a pattern level automation. Okay, but I drew it in as a track level automation and that's not a big deal because we have some functions that will help take care of that. If you, with this track selected, go to the automation icon, you'll see there's another option here that was not available earlier and that's the print track automation to pattern. So I can take the track level automation and embed it in my circuit breaker pattern. And I can choose to print all automation in the event I have lots of parameters available, or I can just choose independently, you know, which parameters I want to use. I just have the one, so I'm gonna just print all automation. And now it's hard to tell except the line is a little thicker, but now we've actually got pattern level automation and track level automation going on with this uh, track. So what I want to do is get rid of the track level automation now that I've printed it to the pattern. And I could do that by going into the automation icon, remove automation, low cut. 
And now we've got that automation embedded at the pattern level. Cool. Let's suppose I thought, you know, I'm going to have maybe some other guitar samples coming after this one here. Geez, I wish I would have put the flanger on the track level. Okay, so that's also possible. So I can actually take the pattern automation and print that to the actual overall track. So again, with this pattern selected, I go to my automation icon. And now it says print pattern automation to track. I'm going to print all the automation that flanger depth. And now it's printed and I've got some duplicate information. So I'm going to go into the pattern and then remove the automation here. Let's go up to the automation icon on the upper right. Remove automation, flanger depth. It's no longer printed at the pattern level. Let's close this up but it is printed at the track level. So as we add additional tracks to the right, we can also then start manipulating the automation there as well by continuing to draw out our curves. So that's about it for today, everyone. I hope that you enjoyed learning about how to automate audio tracks and also how to automate at the pattern level as opposed to the track level and then how we can actually print pattern level automation to a track or vice versa, how we can print track level automation to a pattern. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments, suggestions, or feedback, please leave that in the comments area. And if you'd like to see more helpful Zen Beats videos, please consider subscribing. Thanks again, and take care till next time.